Imagine all the volcanoes on Earth erupting at once, all 1,500 of them. The Floor is Lava wouldn't just be a TV show or a childhood game, but a reality. It would be a global volcanic apocalypse. Welcome to an alternate world, where today we explore the day the Earth roars with all of its volcanic fury, leaving carnage and desolation in its wake. Before we get into the chaos, let's get up close and personal with volcanoes. What exactly are they, and why do they blow their tops? Well, a volcano is basically a rupture in the Earth's crust. It's a planetary pimple. The Earth's crust is divided into tectonic plates that float on the semi-fluid mantle. When these plates move, they create spaces through which magma can rise, forming what we know as volcanoes. But why do they explode? Well, deep beneath the Earth is essentially a high-pressure cooker where magma forms from the melting rocks in the mantle due to intense heat and pressure. This magma contains gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. As magma rises toward the surface, the pressure decreases, allowing these gases to expand and form bubbles. When the pressure becomes too great, boom! The volcano erupts with all of its might, releasing an energy amount equivalent to that of a nuclear bomb. And if that wasn't bad enough, then comes the lava. Once it's out in the open, it flows depending on its type. There's basaltic lava, thin, fluid, fast-moving, like the Usain Bolt of lava. Then you've got andesitic lava, which is thicker and slower, creating steeper, more explosive eruptions. And finally, rhyolitic lava, the thickest and slowest, causing catastrophic pyroclastic flows. Basically, it's a hot mess. And there are some pretty crazy volcanoes out there. Let's start with Yellowstone in the United States, a supervolcano that, although it's been dormant for almost half a million years, could cause a global catastrophe if it erupted. This supervolcano has the power to bury states like Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado with one of its fearsome bursts. And then there's Mauna Loa in Hawaii, the largest shield volcano on Earth, which means it's broad with gentle slopes. Mauna Loa is an active volcano, which means it could erupt at any point. If it did, the volcano's sides would move up and down and side to side because of its shape, causing big, destructive earthquakes joining the fast-moving lava flows. And of course, who could forget Mount Vesuvius in Italy, which is infamous for burying the people of the ancient city of Pompeii with clouds of gas and overflowing lava in just 15 minutes. Did you hear about the Icelandic volcano that is currently active? On May 29th of 2024, the volcano near Grindavik erupted, spewing rivers of lava and causing a series of earthquakes, forcing evacuations of the town and even the famous Blue Lagoon Spa. Imagine that, molten rivers flowing where you used to relax. And uh, let's end on a high note featuring Mount Fuji in Japan, an iconic stratovolcano with a perfectly symmetrical cone. Looks pretty, huh? But don't be fooled by looks. If all of these were to blow up, life on Earth as we know it would drastically change. It would begin with a rumble, a tremor that spreads across continents. Dormant giants like Yellowstone awaken alongside active ones like Kilauea and Etna. If the eruption of a single volcano releases the energy equivalent to a nuclear bomb, just imagine how 1,500 of these explosions would feel. Think about places like Indonesia, the Philippines, and Japan. These island nations are sitting ducks for volcanic eruptions and tsunamis, while places like Naples, Seattle, and Mexico City would face immediate devastation from lava flows and ash. Coastal areas would face additional horrors, as underwater volcanoes trigger massive tsunamis, engulfing islands and everything in their reach. Cities like Tokyo, Los Angeles, and Jakarta would either be submerged or burned within hours. Even if you were far from a volcano, you wouldn't be spared. Ash clouds would spread across continents, darkening skies and clogging air filters. Imagine trying to breathe in a dusty fog while temperatures rise and rise. And you'd think being near the poles might save you, right? Wrong. Ash would blanket snow and ice, accelerating melting and disrupting weather patterns. It goes without saying, the effects on global climate would be dramatic, leading to unpredictable weather and an unprecedented future. If you think things get better after they get worse, think again, because the eruption is only the beginning. 
As the initial eruptions chill out, not really, but you get the idea, the atmosphere would become a war zone. Billions of tons of ash and sulfur dioxide would be spewed into the stratosphere. The sun? Yeah, it'll take a long vacation as its rays would be unable to penetrate this layer of ash. This ash cloud would spread globally in weeks, blocking sunlight and causing temperatures to drop. We're talking about a volcanic winter that could last years. Crops would subsequently fail, leading to a widespread famine. It's like Earth's way of hitting the reset button, but on hard mode. And then there's the acid rain. When sulfur dioxide mixes with atmospheric moisture, these toxic raindrops would fall, contaminating freshwater sources and wreaking havoc on agriculture. Oceans would get acidified, and our marine life would be in serious trouble. The global economy? It's basically toast. Social order? Good luck with that. Could Earth recover from this cataclysmic event? Is human survival even possible? The short answer is, surprisingly, yes. So how would we humans deal with this volcanic chaos? Initially, living on the surface would be a no-go. The air would be thick with ash, making it hard to breathe without masks or improvised breathing devices. Cities would be buried, crops decimated, and the climate would be out of whack. Survival would entail building underground bunkers and makeshift shelters. Scientists and engineers would need to work around the clock to create sustainable living conditions using geothermal energy and hydroponics to grow food. Who knew the end of the world would be so ripe with gardening opportunities? <laughs> uh. By year 10 after our bombastic eruption, the ash would begin to settle and we'd cautiously start to venture back to the surface. Although masks and breathing devices would still be necessary. We'd set up clean zones where air quality is better, allowing for limited outdoor activity. Slowly, we'd rebuild essential infrastructure, water purification systems, solar panels for energy, and small-scale agriculture on less affected plots of land. Now, by year 20 and with our continued cleanup efforts, air quality would improve. Nature would begin to reclaim the land. Those hardy, fast-growing plants like bamboo, willows, and sunflowers would flourish, stabilizing the soil and reducing some of the dust around. Wildlife, too, would make a cautious return. The first animals to come back are typically those that are more adaptable and less sensitive to environmental changes. So insects like beetles and ants, which can survive in harsh conditions, would be the first ones to begin to repopulate the area. We would need to trade our juicy steaks for some juicy cricket burgers while Earth goes back to normal. Yum. But don't worry, pigeons and rabbits would follow, so maybe you can have a meaty treat while deers and cows make their big comeback more slowly. Eventually, humanity would move from underground shelters to settling on the surface again. Buildings would be constructed with ash-resistant materials, and greenhouses become vital for food production. Masks would still be common, but less so in cleaner areas. 200 years later, the Earth would be like, hey, remember that crazy eruption? Me neither. Forests would be denser, air cleaner, and ecosystems more diverse. The scars of the volcanic apocalypse would have healed over. Biodiversity would flourish, with many species returning and new ones evolving. It's probable that they'd come with improved respiratory systems, which I could really use. I'd have an asthma attack just standing up. And after a thousand years, Earth would be a whole new world, lush and vibrant. Humanity would have adapted, living in harmony with nature. The scars of the volcanic apocalypse would be history, taught in schools as a lesson on how we were resilient and innovative. So there you have it, folks. The day all volcanoes erupt would be a mix of horror and heroism. Not only would it show us nature's raw power, but also our ability to survive and adapt. Thanks for joining us on this explosive journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and tell us which alternate world we should explore next.